Welcome to Ladies in Tech with Lauren Deal and Kelly Mack, a show by women for women, breaking the IT stigma by empowering, inspiring, and highlighting ladies in tech. Let's join the ladies in the studio now for today's episode. Welcome to Ladies in Tech, our 10th and final episode of season one. How exciting. Uh, in Ladies in Tech, we empower women to rise to their highest potential in their tech careers, but also inspire women to get involved with a tech career if maybe it's a new idea for you. I'm your host, Lauren Deal, and I'm a TV host. I was a teacher for 10 years, but I'm also so enthusiastic about pursuing my dreams of being in the tech field with so many different certifications offered at IT Pro TV. But I'm not alone. I'm joined with Kelly Mack. Welcome, Kelly. Hey. How are you? Great. Good to see you again, Lauren. I'm so excited about episode 10. You know, we've come through a lot with Ladies in Tech, and in the process, uh, I've learned a lot about cloud management and ITIL4 Foundations, AMCS, Acquiring Managing Cloud Services, and uh, I'm just so grateful for this show and this platform to be able to inspire and uh, touch and reach other fellow women in the tech field. So let's get to it. Oh, my word. Well, this is such a fun episode because to wrap up our, our first season, which is so yeah. crazy to even and say, um, we've done so many different topics in the tech field, different various jobs you could do, different roles. We've interviewed some powerful women, oh Kelly. Oh my gosh, we have, absolutely. And we've talked about everything from virtual reality to augmented reality. Um, oh my gosh, uh, who was our first? Cheryl was our first guest. Cheryl, Janda, yes. Yeah, Shout outs to neat. her, yeah. yeah, and she's a project manager. So we kind of explored the IT field and tech field and different jobs. And today we're going to talk about the top five highest paying jobs in IT and tech. So if you're ready to get to it, I know I am. I am so ready, and I'm excited because we're going to start backwards. We're going to inch down to the number one spot, but these are uh, referenced for the top five in 2022, so very, very recent. Yes. Um, so let's just jump right in. So what's number one, or what's number five, Kelly? Okay, <laughs> and keep in mind, this changes because yes. everything in tech changes like the weather. That's true. So uh, number five is software architect. Mm -hmm. Now, a software architect optimizes the development process by making design choices and dictating technical standards such as coding, tools, and platforms. Forms, and I know you've had interest in the past of coding. Yes. So a software architect is making typically about $114,000 a year. Wow. And that's on the low end, by the way. Now, um, the skills required for a software architect are data modeling and understanding of software architecture, good programming skills, and strong analytical skills as well. That's impressive because, you know, I feel like in a lot of the jobs that we've talked about in this first season, you know, coding definitely pops up and just an understanding of programming. And to know that we joke and say it's the low end, but I mean, that's the six figure club that's doing oh, yeah. amazing. And if that's just your start, that's uh, that's a great place to start. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> $114,000 a year. Yep. Yeah. I think that's yeah, a great salary. I feel like that feels very nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we're inching towards number one. So that was number five. Number four on our list for the top five uh, paying jobs in 2022 in the tech career is IoT Solutions Architect or Internet of Things. And so what that means is it's one of the most in-demand jobs right now. It's one of those uh, tip of your tongue. You're going to hear it a lot. Yeah. Um, but it's also one of the best paying jobs out there in the tech field. Um, because an IoT solutions, if you think about it, it really has to do with machine learning. Um, you also have to have an understanding of um, just programming skills and hardware. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other thing. I didn't realize how many uh, pieces of hardware Internet of Things uh, operates with. But let's talk about the price. 130000 mm. is what you can be expecting to start your salary at. And I'm sorry, that sounds like a really great salary to me. Yeah. Yeah. On the starting end as well. Yes. Yeah. And these are uh, certification jobs, too, I wanted yes. to point out. Uh, moving on to number three when it comes to the top five paying jobs in IT and tech for the first quarter of 2022, a big data engineer. Now, a big data engineer plans, designs, and manages the entire life cycles of large-scale developments and deployments of big data applications. Wow. So uh, this salary starts around $140,000. And the skills required of big data architects are uh, understanding of Hadoop, Spark, uh, NoSQL, as well as data warehousing technologies. So if that's your wheelhouse, that average job is paying about 150, or, or I should say that average salary is about $140,000 for a big data engineer. That actually sounds, it's so interesting to see all the different roles and what they're doing, what their uh, skills are needed, mm -hmm. and then how that affects their salary. 
gallery as well. Right. Um, fascinating, fascinating. So that was number three. Mm -hmm. Guess what, Kelly? Number two Ooh. is blockchain engineer. And uh, I thought this was very interesting because they, you know, they specialize in developing and implementing architecture and solutions for blockchain technology, mm -hmm. which. I think is an interesting career path in itself because it's um, using Ripple and R3, Ethereum, as well as Bitcoin. And I think when I think of blockchain, my mind f first goes to Bitcoin. Right. But there are so many other applications that work with that. Yeah. Um, but this is also high demand. Uh, mm -hmm. This is something that is talked about quite a bit. And so this job is something that you might want to look into, especially because the salary starts at $150,000, Kelly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good money. Great money. All right. So it's time for the number one most paying job of 2022 in the IT and tech arena. Mm -hmm. And that job is, drum roll, <laughs> <laughs> it's a data scientist, actually. So a data scientist is the highest paying tech job across industries and sectors. And there's been about a 29% increase in demand for data scientists. So, you know, a lot of tech jobs and IT jobs are based on demand. And that also has a lot to do with how much you're worth salary wise, too. Right. So a data scientist analyzes and interprets, uh, in uh, interprets <laughs> <laughs> complex data to help organizations make better and more timely decisions, mm -hmm. which is so important time management, uh, you know, managing the budget, so on and so forth, working with the numbers. And this job pays on the low end, 150. Oh on word. the low end, and that's like a beginning salary, wow. $150,000. So you're saying when you start that day, that's what you're sign on. Wow. Typically, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. I have to say, all of these, so that was our top five, by the way. Right. Uh, very impressive careers. But I think it's so interesting, understanding a lot of the certifications can get you in a lot of different pathways. Yes. And, um, Having basic uh, programming skills, coding mm -hmm. skills, understanding different software, and um, having the certification lingo, mm -hmm. I think is such a powerful way to get your foot in the door as well. So, um, you know, here at IT Pro, there are so many different learning pathways. You just have to choose your interest, and Absolutely. it leads you. So, Lauren, ironically, I was talking to one of our students today and one of our subscribers of IT Pro TV, and he was telling me how he actually had degrees with. Um, IT, IT degrees, as well as computer science degrees, but he couldn't land a job. And then he took some courses here at IT Pro TV. He got his certifications, and now he has a great job with a Fortune 500 company uh, working in the cloud, cloud management. So wow. I think that was quite amazing to hear that because, you know, he couldn't get what he needed with his degree, but he got it with our certifications. But I think that's such a powerful thing because I think our whole generation has been pushed towards degrees mm -hmm. and that college pathway. But nowadays, instead of spending the money and having to pay that back for right. the education um, that might not even land you the interview. Now we're saying mm -hmm. if you've got a degree, fantastic, we're right. happy for you. Um, but if that's just not in your cards, certifications are typically a lot less money mm -hmm. and you can bundle quite a bit together. You can. And it can expedite your process into getting a career uh, a little bit faster. You, you might not have the same time uh, constraints as you might with a degree. Mm -hmm. So I love hearing from our students because um, mm -hmm. it kind of puts it into perspective that this is real. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? We have so many courses here at IT Pro TV for you to check out. And so if you just want to uh, log in and try a free membership, that's a possibility. Or if you are finding some of these uh, courses to be of interest to you, you can sign up and actually follow along with a learning platform uh, that's built for you. So that's exciting. And you can have a certification that gets you one of these top paying jobs. But we have a lit tip with Sophie. So Sophie, what is our lit tip of the week? Hey, thanks, Lauren. This week's lit tip is all about some financial management apps that you can take advantage of. Because we're talking about some of the highest paid jobs in tech, if you want to make a lot of money, it's important to know how to manage that money. So the first app I have here is called Mint. If you're familiar at all with budgeting apps, you've probably heard of Mint. It basically allows you to track your spending and your savings. You can set budget goals. You can sync up all of your bank accounts, your money management accounts. If you have retirement and investment accounts or credit cards, it can track all of your monthly bills and it sorts your transactions into budget categories so you can easily keep track of things. So it's actually something I've started using in the past couple of weeks. And as a student, it's really helped me to keep my budgeting on track. The second app I want to touch on is called Truebill. It's another app I've started using, and this is a little bit different than Mint. It will still notify you about some of your bills, um, but also it lets you keep track of some subscriptions that you might have that maybe you've forgotten about. I know, especially as a student, there's subscriptions I have to 
student services like Chegg or Quizlet and I don't need them anymore and I've forgotten that I'm paying for them. So this notifies me, hey, you're paying for something you don't really use, I can easily go in and cancel it. The last app I wanna talk about is called Personal Capital. This one's a little different. It's specifically geared towards individuals with a higher net worth. And since we're talking about high paying individuals and jobs in tech, I figured I would touch on it. You need a minimum of $100,000 in assets, which is a lot. Um, but you can get a robo-advisor for your portfolio management if you're into investing. Uh, they offer free network, excuse me, net worth tracking and retirement planning software for anyone. And for a fee, you can access a personal financial advisor that will help you with your investments. So if it's something that you're interested in getting started in investing, um, that's definitely an app that you could look into. So these are just some financial management apps that I was able to find that I thought um, offered some really unique abilities. And that's our Lit Tip of the Week. Back to you, ladies. Well, thank you so much, Sophie. That was eye-opening to understand the fi uh, the fintech or mm -hmm. the financial tech um, and how all that works. So that was pretty pretty great. So thank you, Sophie. Definitely. And if you're going to be uh, making that big salary that we just <laughs> talked about, you got to know how to manage it and um, you know be responsible with it. So uh, speaking of women, hey, let's talk about this week's woman of the week. Our wow, Sophie. Who is it this week? Hey, thanks, Kelly. This week's Woman of the Week is Whitney Wolf Hurd. You actually might have heard of her. She's the one that founded Bumble, which is a super popular dating app. It's focused on women, and so women make the first move. But Whitney got her start way back in college. She started a business selling bamboo totes to benefit areas that were affected by the BP oil spill. Then she started a second business called Tender Heart, which was dedicated to raising awareness around human trafficking. And after she graduated, she traveled to Southeast Asia, where she worked with orphanages. So even in her early 20s, she was doing a ton of humanitarian work. But later in her life, she became the vice president of marketing for Tinder, which is another dating app that's super popular. She eventually resigned there to res pursue the idea of a dating app catered towards women. That's when she founded Bumble in 2014. And now seven years later, Bumble topped $13 billion in valuation after listing shares on the NASDAQ exchange. And because we were talking about Women of the Week, a couple weeks ago, we talked about moms in tech. This is something I wanted to mention. When she rang the NASDAQ bell, she actually had her 18-month-old son on her hip with her. And I just thought that was so sweet. In February 2021, she was actually the world's youngest current female self-made billionaire when she took Bumble public. And so she's the youngest woman to have taken a company public at the age of 31. She's got a bunch of honors, too many to list, but a couple of them are she was one of Elle's Women in Tech a couple of years ago. She was named to Forbes 30 under 30 twice. She was featured in the Time 100 list. And as of last spring, Forbes estimated her net worth at approximately $1.5 billion. So because we're talking about high paying jobs in tech, this is an individual that broke into the tech industry that founded her own app, uh, and it's now one of the number one dating apps in the world, and she's currently got a net worth of over a billion dollars, and I just thought that was pretty incredible. Um, and she's still pretty young as well. So uh, that's our Woman of the Week, and after we hear these, we've always got a little extra motivation. So let's kick it to Kelly for her moment of motivation. Well, thank you, Sophie. You know, today we're gonna talk about change, and change is inevitable, so don't be afraid of change. You may lose something good, but you may also gain something even better. And I think that we've all seen this, you know, in the recent 2020 and 2021 have been rough years. So um, today we're talking about change and not being afraid of change. Well, I think sometimes change is scary because we don't know what's about to happen. You know what, I heard this really great quote about you're driving in fog, mm -hmm. and you've got your lights on, and you can see right in front of your car, but you don't realize that you're you know what's right beyond the fog and usually right. the best things are right beyond you know outside of your comfort zone mm -hmm. we'll put it that way so mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid of change right and like you said the world is always changing and I think sometimes change is inevitable so that you can get something even better so I love that last line gain something better yes 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 yeah. and you can't be afraid because hey if you don't take that risk guess what Yes. You never experience what's on the other side. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And you know what? Thank you so much for joining us for our first season of Ladies in Tech. We have learned right along with you, and we hope that we've inspired you to step out of your comfort zone and try something new. But please join us over on socials. We're going to take a quick break between our first season and our second, and we'd love to hear about what you'd like to see in our second season. We're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter, and we're also on Instagram. So make sure that you're engaging with us. And we've got a really great community of women supporting other women in the tech field, so make sure you're joining us there. But Kelly, this wraps up season one of yeah. Ladies in Tech. Uh, high five, friend. Yes. We did that. <laughs> oh gosh, if you guys could only see uh, the beginning of this and how far we've come. <laughs> so thank you to our production team as well. They've been a great help and uh, we look forward to seeing you in season two. Mm -hmm.